What's up, y'all? It's T-Tar, and today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Johto, Legends Celebi, whatever it's going to be called, how it could potentially come out in 2024, and something grand Game Freak might be cooking up. Now, initially, when it came to Legends Johto, I thought Game Freak might not do it because a lot of people would be focusing on Unova, so they'd want to see the original Dragon lore on that, and if Game Freak put out Legends Johto, it would get them less sales. But when one of y'all told me that it's a real possibility Game Freak will stall this year while they're working on something for the new console, it made me go back into my ideas, and one thing I really want to talk about is why Legends Johto is incredibly important, and how of all the regions in the world, Sinnoh is the most important, right? It has Arceus, the creator of the entire universe, coming to that region and making Sinnoh as the first region on the entire globe. So between Kanto, Hoenn, Unova, Alola, Sinnoh is the most important Legends game and region. But there is one region more important than Sinnoh, potentially, and it's Johto. And the reason it's Johto is because Sinnoh and Johto are secretly like one half of the story each. Of all the regions, I know we didn't really think Johto was like this, but Johto is an incredibly important region. So it goes like this, right? In Legends uh, Arceus, they talk about these people that existed called the Celestica people. This entire story and hints I'm about to tell in this video is all stuff in the background of Legends Arceus, but it's all real. So these Celestica people are the original people that came to Hisui. The way I like to paint the picture in my head because there's a lot of details missing is that the olden days before Hisui, it was not called the Celestica region. It was just maybe one village in the middle of what is Sinnoh today. And that village was Celestica Village, and those people lived there. Like, you have to think stuff was very primitive there. And the deal with these people is, they knew what Almighty Sinnoh was. And potentially, they lived alongside it. They knew, potentially firsthand, what Almighty Sinnoh was. And so, as time passed, and something happened to Celestica people, and then the Diamond of Pearl Clans came, remnants of the Celestica people's lore still lingered. Like, this mention of this Almighty Creator called Almighty Sinnoh. And so they started misunderstanding that and worshipping it in two different ways, Diaga and Palkia. But everything from the Diamond of Pearl Clans onward is kind of like a, a wrong history to Sinnoh. Even though it leads to modern Sinnoh, there's a real history about Arceus that goes before the days of the Diamond of Pearl Clan. And so these Celestica people, right? The story with them is that one day, they all left and disappeared forever. Whatever that can mean. Either they died out in Celestica Village, or they traveled the seas, and so they merged into different regions, and so now the pure bloodline is lost. But the context given is that one day their light went away, and this is why I like to say the whole they lived with Arceus idea, because I imagine they lived with Arceus, got used to it, and reliant on it, that Arceus is the light that one day decided to go home, and it made the Celestica people unable to do anything. Like, they were too reliant on Arceus, so they ended up wiping themselves out. There are currently three potential known Celestical people. The Ancient Hero, which I made a whole video on, I'll link it at the end of this, and potentially, Kogita and Volo are descendants of the Celestica people, to put it as simply as possible. So these Celestica people, they are true Sinnoh. They are the ones who even knew what Arceus looked like when they mentioned Almighty Sinnoh and threw this word around. They were talking about the actual Arceus. The Celestica people came to Sinnoh. They are not from Sinnoh. So this whole Celestica village is something they came to with their Arceus knowledge already. This is when we get into Johto. Because where the Celestica people really came from was something concerning Johto. And it's so cool that Game Freak did this. I wrote so I wrote a whole story for Legends Johto. I just didn't make the video. This was like a few months back. But there's something incredible that they can cook up here. Because something cool Game Freak did with Legends Arceus is they didn't really retcon anything. They made Legends Arceus fit perfectly into all the lore they've built up until now, which includes the original Diamond and Pearl games, as well as something that happens in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the Johto games. So in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, when you get the event Arceus and bring it to Johto, something happens. And at first, this event, it felt like, okay, it's non-canon. Not to throw in a weird term like that, but it didn't actually happen. It's kind of like uh, when the protagonist in like black and white catches all the legendaries, 
but they're still there for the black tune, white tune, legendary capture. You just assume, okay, certain things, not everything happened that you can just play in the games. And so here's something cool, right? When you beat Volo at the end of Legends Arceus, he says a cool line. He says, okay, you're about to meet Arceus, so I'm gonna dip because I'm not about to sit here and witness it. But guess what? Over the next few hundred years, I will one day meet Arceus. That's what Volo says. And of course, Volo's a normal human as far as we know, so he's never meeting Arceus. You know, he's just gonna die an old man. He failed. So now we go back to this event in HeartGold and Soul Silver. If you have Arceus in your party, Cynthia, you can meet up with her, and you're taken outside of the Johto region. This is HeartGold and Soul Silver. So a passerby finds you in the ruins of Alf and takes you outside of Kanto and Johto to this new place and this is where you run into Cynthia and an event happens I know y'all know this event in something called the Shinjo ruins where Cynthia gets to witness Arceus and Cynthia's Volo's descendant so Volo does eventually get to witness Arceus and this event is pretty much Arceus this almighty creature making Dialga Palkia and Giratina easily so the moment Volo said that it created something which is that that Shinjo ruins event is real Cynthia fulfills Volo's prophecy of ultimately meeting Arceus and unlike Volo's very you know speared approach of actually trying to hunt down Arceus as time went on the way Cynthia succeeded is Arceus just came to her all Cynthia had to do was you know have a good heart be a strong trainer and Arceus she literally got to witness it the good way and so that's what opened up the idea that this whole Shinjo ruins event is real it really happened and then you start to see more things like in the Shinjo ruins event when Arceus is making one of the three uh space-time trio in front of you as an egg a certain symbol appears on the ground and this symbol is like this triangle with circles on it this exact symbol appears in Legends Arceus at the very end of the secret boss Arceus this looked like a giant version of the Shinjo ruins Wait, it actually does. Is it a triangle? In the Hall of Origin, when you're fighting Arceus, which means that symbol is legit. Everything is intended. That same symbol that Arceus has in the Hall of Origin, the people who built Shinjo Ruins, it's already there with the same symbols. So this confirms that whole Shinjo Ruins event, especially with Cynthia fulfilling Vol's prophecy, that's a real event. And that whole Shinjo Ruins is real too. Now the name Shinjo Ruins, what this is in this snowy place that you're taken to to meet Cynthia, what it actually is, is Shinjo Ruins. I have to correct myself. It's Sinjo Ruins and then Shinto Ruins in Japanese. I mix them up. But it's Sinjo Ruins. Sin from Sinno, Jo as in Johto. Sinjo Ruins. It's a combination of the both. And same thing for Shinto Ruins, right? Shinno and Johto. It's a combination of the both even in Japanese. And this is intentional. The place you go to for Shinjo Ruins is somewhere in between Johto and Sinnoh. Because Johto is one of the most important regions in the world because that Shin that they're talking about that's half of Shinjo, half the people that built those ruins or came from those ruins are the celestial people. So the people that later are in Sinnoh living alongside Arceus and then they die out those ancient people that we hold to such high esteem the people who had the ancient hero with them too that befriended all the Pokemon and met Arceus they came from the Shinjo ruins and are half the story the other half of the people that built that is Johto people that's how important Johto is and Game Freak has barely touched on this so if a Legends Johto were to happen it could be under the name you know Celebi and I'll have to talk about this more I have an idea for why it could be called Celebi but they could give Celebi a more important role but it would actually continue the story that Legends Arceus started with these Celestica people and what is up with the Shinjo ruins and you know when you go to all the odd places in Johto you notice how eerie things are in Johto like check it out let me jog some of y'all's memories for Johto there is a place with puzzles with no reward for beating them in the ruins of Alf. Alf is what Arceus is, the Alpha Pokemon. It's like Pokemon is ready to tie the ruins of Alf, which leads nowhere. I remember spending so much time trying to solve it as a kid, it led nowhere to Arceus, the ruins of the Alpha Pokemon Arceus. And Legends Arceus 
also put a heavy tie on unknowns to Arceus. You find them all over the game. You got to collect all the Arceus to trigger something in Legends Arceus. These are the same unknowns that are all over the place in Johto and especially in these Runes of Elf. Runes of Elf here is also how you trigger the event of meeting Cynthia in the Shinjo Ruins. As much as Arceus is a Gen 4 Pokemon and tied to Sinnoh, it's also the original Pokemon that created the universe, but it's also tied to Johto. If we didn't know better, Arceus would have been a Gen 2 Pokemon. Even though the Pokedex goes a certain way and we introduce the gens a certain way, more so to Lugia and Ho-Oh, Johto is closer tied in its true history to Arceus. Look at this screenshot from Gen 2 in Pokemon Crystal where it says Runes of Elf. They may not have realized what they were planning at that time, but this is about Arceus. Arceus was worshipped in Johto before the Sinnoh people started worshipping it. And so what Legends Johto could do is not only continue the story of what Arceus' role in the world is, and also tell it through the lens of the Johto region, you know, intertwining the Burnt Tower, Akritik City, uh, Ho-Oh and Lugia lore. But they could also explain all the mysteries that are left behind in Johto with no explanation. The unknowns, all those weird structures you can see. And Legends Johto, Legend Celebi could actually take place right after Legends Arceus. Like right after. So Volo might still be roaming around and you might see him in Legends Johto. There's, this opens up a whole door of possibilities. I will touch on them. I have so many ideas for this. Johto has been set up as such an important region with no answers told about it. Game Freak has cooked up the perfect opportunity to throw a big bomb and reveal what Johto really is. So make sure I shank that like button and let me know your thoughts on this. And before I end this video, there's so much I could still tell you. Like for example, when we are playing Legends Arceus, you see all these ruins that you never see in the modern Sinnoh games. Ruins of like Dayagon Palkia statues, a broken statue of Giratina. These are things from the times of the Celestica people. The amount of stuff they knew is all lost to time in this entire story. They knew Giratina was bad and they broke its statue and everything, but it's all a story that's implied. All of this could be addressed in a Legends Johto, and it could be one giant story. Let me ask what y'all think. Between Johto and Unova, what do you think right now in Game Freak Studio they're working on? A Johto revisit, whether it's Legends or something else, or a Unova revisit, Legends or something else? Y'all let me know in the comments. Make sure y'all shank that like button, and I'll see y'all either later today or tomorrow. Take care.